Mayor Francis Suarez is a busy man. From making Miami the next tech destination to fostering blockchain and cryptocurrency right here in the Magic City, he's always on the go. But what does fun look like for him? Well, I ask him just that in part two of our sit down where we get personal. Take a look. Well, enough tech and business talk, Mayor. Let's get personal. Let's talk about you. Let's, uh -oh, let's, uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> let's talk about you. But for real though, how does the mayor- I'm a robot. Uh, you I'm are a not a robot. You know what? Thomas Roberts of <laughs> Daily Mail TV also said he was a robot. Brother, you are not a robot. But how does the mayor of one of the most iconic cities in the world, legendary cities in the world, unwind and disconnect and detach? So I do it usually with a cigar and with a little bit of Japanese whiskey, which is my favorite. Um, I try to disconnect, get home, you know, have a little, that's the one thing that can make me put my phone down. Yeah. So that, that's one thing I love to read. I'm a voracious reader. Um, I love to read at night. I, I read everything electron on electronic on an iPad, my books, uh, you know, periodicals, newspapers, everything I read electronically. Um, and then I love to go spearfishing. That's one of the things I love to do. I'm a, I'm a avid spear fisherman. I love the water. I love being under the water. It's another place that I can completely disconnect and be in another world. Well, we're learning something new about you every single day. I listened to your interview with Kara Swisher of the New York of Kara Swisher of the New York Times. And I was thinking, like, man, the mayor, I bet you're really fun to hang out with. With everything you do, though, one of the things I, I truly find impressive about you is that one, you're a young man. You come from a, a long line of successful politicians, your father being being legendary here in Miami. You have this incredible outlook on life. You're so positive. How do you keep that positive mentality, that positive um, perspective? In, in, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of trying to elevate Miami, in the midst of you living your life, how do you keep yourself grounded? I'm really glad that you asked that question because uh, uh, I think, I wish more people would ask me that. I think, I think number one, I learned it from my dad. Uh, my dad is one of these people, if, he ever, if I ever wrote a book about him, it would be called The Eternal Optimist. Okay. I mean, he's someone that no matter what, you can never get him. When you ask him, how are things going? You can never get him to say, oh, things are terrible. Oh my God, I'm so tired. Oh my, he, he just, he just, it's it's not in his DNA. Sure. And and I'll be honest with you, when I was young, uh, I was the opposite. Um, I was sort of the opposite. And I learned, I had like a trigger point at 18, 19 years old where I learned, hey, wait a second, this decision <laughs> that we make here, right? right. Like the, 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 the decision to be positive or negative about a certain outcome, it's a decision. And, and I remember because I would go to my dad, I'll never forget this as long as I live. And I, this is probably the biggest, one of the most, one of the most uh, incredible gifts he ever gave me. And I would go to him and say, no dad, I'm super down. Um, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, this is going wrong in my life or whatever. And he would say to me, are you kidding me? Your life is amazing. And he would tell me, this is going right, this is going right, this is going right, this is going right. And I would say to him, you know what? Everything he said is true. It's not like it's, it's not false. He didn't make it up. They're right. true things. And, and I just started realizing it. It's like, it's like a logical brick that hits you in the face and says, wait a second, we have a choice. We right. get up in the morning and we can focus on all the things that we had that we don't, or we can get up in the morning and thank God for all the things that we do have. Um, and, 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 and then hope for the future, be hopeful right. about the future because, because that leads me to my second point, which is my faith, you know, because, because what the beautiful thing about faith and believing in God for me is that, you know, you, you, you have a hope for a better tomorrow. Right. You have a hope that your dreams and your hopes and the aspirations of your life and the lives of others that you affect are going to be better. And that's something that um, I think gives you a lot of energy um, right. and, and should make you want to live and make you want to live and fulfill what what is your God given promise in life. Yeah. And there we have it, man. Wow. Powerful, profound words from, like I said, one of the you're probably one of the most influential people, I would say, in America right now, bringing all eyes wow. positively to the Magic City in honor to have you here on Inside South Florida. You gotta come back, Mayor. This is not just a one-time thing. You gotta become a friend of the show. We gotta have listen, you back. Listen, I will come back as often as you want, as long as you keep giving me uh, interviewing tips. Like, you get, I got about five <laughs> interviewing tips just from this interview right now. So maybe I'll have you on a Cafecito Tech Talk and we hey. think the, the Cafecito Tech Talk will be about you teaching me how to interview. <laughs>